introducing Steeda's brand new 2024 Dark Horse Mustang in race red. Now, I've been with Steeda for almost 25 years and we have never had such a commitment to a new platform like we have right now. We've got four cars now in our stable, all the brand new S650s. From the Silver Bullet 2.0 drag car to the white HPDE car. Shoot, Dario the owner, he's got a race red 2024 Mustang as a daily. Now we've got our dark horse. So as with everything, we're gonna benchmark it, right? We wanna see what the baseline is. Glenn had it out on its third day at Sebring International Raceway. This week, we've been dyno testing it, right? Dyno testing its stock with some air filters, with some other trick new parts, because we have got a laundry list of things we want to attack on this dark horse that is different than your standard GT Mustangs. In fact, Friday night, we're gonna take it up to SGMP and drag race it. Now, <laughs> I'm not expecting much. It's got the six speed Tremec transmission in it, and it's got those sticky, super small sidewall tires on it. But we're gonna go out there, see what it runs bone stock, no pulling passenger seats, no changing air filters. I'm gonna change tire pressures, but otherwise it's gonna be as delivered from Ford. And let's see what it does. We did some draggy testing yesterday. DA was like 2,600 feet. So we're in the heat of the summer here in good old South Georgia. So like I said, nothing earth shattering, but we wanna get the baselines done. We wanna do some solid testing because we're gonna absolutely transform this car because we wanna show you how you can take the cream of the crop 2024 Dark Horse and take it to the next level. A lot of times people think our parts can only help make their GT or V6 or EcoBoost better, but quite frankly, we're gonna put our parts up against the Dark Horse because we know we can take this car to the next level. So before we take it to that next level, we're gonna show you what this car is capable in its stock form from Sebring to the dyno to the drag strip. Stay tuned. So what's a dark horse? What makes a dark horse different? Well, the first cue is gonna be its styling, right? It's got these great two-tone black hood stripes you're gonna see up front. It's got its mask on the front, right? A lot different than your typical GT. So the styling cues are there. It's gonna allow it to stand out from your typical Mustang. Also, you've got the first ever front-facing horse on a Mustang. So you'll see the badging on both fenders as well as the rear deck lid that's got that Dark Horse emblem on it. All right, now if you have the handling package edition like we do on the Dark Horse, it's gonna come with these larger 19 inch wheels with the Pirelli P0 Trufeo RS tires. These are sticky. You're also gonna notice you've got all that front arrow on the car as well. These are going to give you the utmost in traction when you're out there pushing this thing in the turns. All right, so as we move to the back of the car, the biggest thing that stands out is this track-inspired wing. Now, what's cool about this is the gurney flap. It's actually removable, but what that's gonna do is create a tremendous amount of downforce when you're at the track. It also gives you more top-end stability, right? You're driving the back of the car down, you're promoting ultimate traction. It's gonna allow the car to feel much more stable when it's out on track. But like I said, the beauty of it is, is that can actually be removed Removable. Also, the exhaust. This has got Ford's active exhaust system, which quite frankly, as long as you live around people, these cars are much louder than they used to be, right? So you can start the car up in quiet mode every day while it's going through its cold start warm up where it's dumping extra fuel in, makes the car louder. And then once you kind of get out of the neighborhood, you can switch into track mode and it really, really makes this car sound good. The other thing you'll know as we work our way down is the lower rear diffuser. Now, that's just not there for looks. These cars come with a diff cooler, and what that does is allow air as it's traveling underneath the car to go through that diff cooler and find its way out through that rear diffuser. Now, if you don't have a diff cooler, 
we offer one for you. This car was designed and built to go around the road course and to do it very competitively. So that diff cooler is a key component to keeping that diff cool when you're going around the corners because each tire is rotating at a different speed, which means your rear diff is slipping, which means it's gonna generate heat and you're gonna need that cooler. Now, one of the really nice things about these cars is the Magna Ride suspension. What is that? Well, quite simply put, it's an ever-changing, adjusting shock and strut combination. By adding tiny little metal particles to the actual fluid and controlling it with magnets, you can have a nice, comfortable street ride. With a flip of a switch, you can switch into track mode, which is gonna give you a little bit firmer of a ride, and then in drag mode, right? Flip into drag mode, it's gonna loosen up the front, tighten up the rear, so Magna Ride, absolute game changer. It really, really makes this car enjoyable to drive. Now the good stuff, right? Under the hood. Dark horses are coming with an additional 20 horsepower over that factory GT. Where do they get the horsepower from? Well, I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure. A lot of it probably has to do with the revised calibration, more ignition timing, different injector timing than your standard GT. Now Ford did beef up some things on the dark horse to make it more durable. You've got the connecting rods out of the GT500, because let's face it, you get the top of the line Mustang, you're probably gonna try and add horsepower, whether that be a Whipple supercharger, but rest assured that you're starting with more horsepower than that GT, and we've got the dyno numbers to prove it. Now we moved our way into the interior. First thing that's gonna stand out to you is this blue titanium shift knob. I'm not really sure I understand it. There's a ton of craze about it on the internet. It looks super cool. It's lightweight, but what that tells you is there's something different, right? You just don't have your normal MT82 transmission here. It actually comes with a Tremec six-speed transmission. Now, from the old days, even from the Fox Buy days, when you add the name Tremec, to your combo, your build, you know it screams durability, right? Bigger, stronger, heavier gears, they're gonna make sure that this transmission withstands the abuse that you're gonna throw at it. Whether it be on the road course, the drag strip, Tremec transmission really separates this from all the other Mustangs offered for 2024. <laughs> oh, this thing is awesome. Dark horse in race red, right? That's the most important thing. Glenn's been nagging on me. I tell him I want a newer Mustang in red with a manual transmission, and uh, I'm just excited. In fact, he sent me the uh, the window sticker and everything, but this is the first time they're saying in like 20 years that Ford has come out with a new nameplate, right? First time ever a forward-facing horse on the Mustang, and uh, Let's see, this is supposed to be top of the line, right? We don't have any GT500s, no gt 350 So uh, outside taking it real quick to the detail shop, um, it's the first thing we did, right? Glenn likes to go out there and get bugs all over the front of it and rock chips and you know drag racers. We, we like to have show cars, they, they gotta look pretty. So first thing we did when we came up here to Valdosta, Georgia was uh, send over to our friends at Preferred Detailing and uh, get a nice good coat of wax on it. So uh, we're gonna go out, give you some driving impressions on it, um, maybe drop it off in Mexico and uh, make a couple draggy hits. Uh, Glenn, right? <clears throat> we've had the car just over a week and we're already low on fuel. Just over a week we've had this car. Uh, we got in on a Thursday, Glenn drove it on Friday, Saturday, by Sunday, he was heading to Sebring Raceway to break the car in. Um, made really, really good uh, lap times out there considering the car is 100% bone stock. He was very happy with the results, so uh, let's show you them. 
Hello, I'm Glenn Vitale with Steeda, and we're here at Sebring this afternoon. We just ran our brand new dark horse through two sessions. It's a bit later in the day. It's pretty hot out today. We just got this car Thursday, and we wanted to see what it would baseline at Sebring. So on the first session, we got it down to a 228, which is basically two seconds faster than what we turned with a bone stock performance pack GT earlier in the year. The second session out, we actually got down to a 27, dropped another second off the, the lap time, bringing this car right off the showroom floor, three seconds faster than what we were able to do with a Performance Pack GT right off the showroom floor. This car currently has 315 miles on it. We brought it to the track with about 270, so we did break it in a little bit around town and whatnot. It's an interesting car, I'll say that. I love the exhaust note on the active exhaust. Ford did a great job with this car. The tires are awesome. It'd be interesting to see what the white Performance Pack GT that we have would do with these tires on it, a back-to-back -back comparison. They are considerably stickier than the Pirelli P0s that came on the Performance Pack GT cars. One of the interesting parts about this car is it comes with a Tremec transmission versus the Getrag that comes in the Performance Pack GT. And I must say, it is a much better track-oriented transmission than what we had in the Performance Pack GT. It's so much smoother on the shifts and you feel the gear when you're getting in it. So you might be asking yourself, why did we only do two sessions today? Well, the car was pretty much telling us it's gonna go as fast as it's gonna go. And the second session we were seeing oil temperatures hovering close to 300 degrees. So we had to back down and let the car cool down a couple laps before we went back out and tried to drop the lap times down. So with that being said, we'll go back to Steeda R&D and see what we can do to make this car even faster next time. So without further ado, here's the lap time of 227 around Sebring in the Dark Horse. Then it came up here, we trailered it up to Valdosta. Like I said, we got it detailed. And then uh, we tried a couple things on the dyno the last couple days and uh, really impressed with the numbers this put down in stock form. All right, so it's hot, it's 86 degrees, 54% humidity, 
our dyno hates making horsepower, right? Very first ever dark horse dyno. We laid down 408 horsepower in the middle of a hurricane. Well, it's not raining outside, but it's hot. We got a brand new race red dark horse. And that one that made 408, that was an automatic. This one does have the Tremec transmission. So let's see what kind of power it's gonna make. Right, this makes no freaking sense whatsoever. Obviously, we've got the manual, and I've said for a long time, race red is the only color. It goes really fast. 443 horsepower and 384 foot-pounds of torque, bone stock. Stock air filters, carbon traps. <laughs> we even had the hood closed on this thing. 443 horsepower? Ah, race red, baby. That's all I got to say. Steeda, Dark Horse, Ford, you guys did a heck of a job, but uh, I mean, we've seen everything from 408 horsepower to 420-ish bone stock, even the white HPD car, right? It only makes a little bit more than this with long tube headers, air filters, free flowing exhaust. That's insane, 443 horsepower, bone stock, Steeda. So, when we were testing it this week, you saw what we did stock, 443 horsepower. That's awesome. Uh, we had our steed air filters, right? Five horsepower, seven foot-pounds of torque. Same degrees in the dyno room. Try to check off as many variables as possible. That's, for a couple hundred bucks, that's phenomenal. Um, so we're excited about that. They did throw the stock air filters back on it for this draggy testing, but um, we're excited. We have something new up our sleeve, and uh, that'll be on the dyno this week too. So uh, there's only one option right now there on the market. Uh, while we think it's a good option, we have the saying at Steeda that uh, we're only gonna make something if we think we can make it better than what's already out there. and. Uh, the same goes for this new product we'll be testing. So stay tuned, uh, should be available in the next three to four months. But we were really shocked to see the numbers this thing put down in stock form. And anybody that calls it a dud, obviously they're, they're pretty much just a hater. Uh, Ford doesn't change these cars and go backwards, right? They're gonna go forward. Even you could take it back to 96, everybody was losing their mind over the two valve overhead cam motors. Yeah, it wasn't a push rod, it wasn't a five liter, but you know what? They showed you with that 96 Cobra, when they added four valves, you could slap a blower on those things, a Vortec, and make 475 all day long. So we know once you're able to unlock these things, once you're able to tune them, they're gonna respond great, but even like I said, in a completely stock form, Glenn was very impressed with how this car handled Sebring and, and the amount of grip, but as with everything at Steeda, it doesn't matter whether you got an EcoBoost, a V6, a GT, GT350, Mach 1, 500, or a Dark Horse. We're gonna help take you to the next level, right? Our parts just don't make the base Mustang better. Well, of course they do. But a lot of times people think, oh, I've got a PP, I got a Mach 1, I don't need anything else. Well, that's not necessarily true. We can take these cars to a whole nother level and still have all the creature comforts you're used to with a Mustang. And I'll be honest, first impressions, this thing is super smooth. Love the Tremec transmission and uh, the fotainment, everything's right in front of you. And just the whole Ford performance and, and what they're doing, I mean, You've got the Dark Horse. You're gonna have a Dark Horse R. You know, you got the new GT3 Mustang. In fact, that was just racing this past weekend at Le Mans, right? They placed third and fourth, I believe, and uh, that's a heck of a showing for a brand new car and platform, and it really shows Ford's dedication and Ford Performance's dedication to the aftermarket, right? And how far we can push these cars, still be emissions compliant. Like I said, the interior, it's one of my favorite things about this new S650. From the complete digital dash to everything being so close, I mean, it's a, 
it's awesome. They really did a great job with it. So we flew the car all the way down here to Mexico to try a couple draggy hits. Um, I'm not a draggy guy. Two, two, 60 foot, really just bogging it. And then trying to figure out where your floating rev limiter is. Um, there's a red line at 7,500, but clearly on our first attempt, it didn't let me get to 7,500. So we'll slip the clutch a little bit. It needs more. That's the rev limiter in third. It was much lower than that. So trying to shift everything at 7,000 RPMs, resulting in low 13s. Now it is 96 degrees outside. I think the humidity we just checked was like 20, 300 feet. So it's hot. It's, uh, you know, almost four o'clock here in South Georgia in the, in the dead heat of everything. So we'll make another little pass. Okay, we'll take it, we'll take it, we'll take it. 1296. I've never been so excited to go 12s before. I mean, are you kidding me? But it's hot. DA has now crept up to what? Just under, just over 2,500 feet. So we got a 1296 on our, what? Third or fourth attempt, Draggy. But I really wish I could have taken this car home over the weekend. Not only to take my beautiful wife to dinner in, but so I could get to drive it, right? All these cars are different. It's my first time driving the Tremec. Not sure when the last time I had a car at the drag strip was with a manual. I actually think it was the S197, but uh, this is a cool car. Looks great, handles great, clutch smells a little bit, and that actually might be the brakes because we were getting on it. But uh, we're gonna take a quick flight back to the US Get this car ready to uh, go to the track on Friday. Bone stock. So uh, give us your thoughts, comments, let us know uh, what kind of times you think it's gonna run this weekend and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so immediate driving impressions, right? Not immediate, right? I've been driving it for 20 minutes. This car is awesome. It's smooth. It's quiet. Flick of a switch, it can be louder. Um, Ford, Ford Performance. Everybody did a kick butt job with this. The Tremec feels amazing. I do want to drive it more to get used to it a little bit, right? Everybody knows, right, even back in the day, Tremecs, it's gonna be a little bit heavier of a gear feel, gear shifting, unlike the MT82, which you could actually rip that thing around with ease. It takes a little bit more effort with this, but I do like it a lot. Uh, awesome package. As you saw, Glenn, quite capable out there at the road course um, at Sebring. Now we're gonna give a hand in drag racing. We're gonna go ahead and take it out there at SGMP Friday night and make some shakedown passes, try to save the clutch. Obviously we're not going for any records. This isn't the silver bullet or we got a bunch of pressure on us. Let's go out there, try to run some low 12s, maybe slip it in the 11s on stock tires. No Mickey Thompsons, no cold air intakes, no air filters, no nothing. 100% bone stock stock shifter and uh, we go from there so let us know what you think it's going to do with the drag strip we're super excited about it hit like subscribe follow us on TikTok, facebook youtube instagram and remember the most important thing at the end of the day steeda where speed matters